Greetings, everybody. We're looking at Edge Magazine number 11, released August 1994, and about the future of interactive entertainment. And as you can see, we have the PlayStation 1 on the cover, which indeed will, would be the world beating game box. Let's look at the uh, little part at the bottom. And it says, Sony's plan for world domination, 500 MIPS, which is, uh, oh, what does that mean? Well, it's another way of uh, saying uh, processor speed. 4,000 simulation sprites, well, that's a lot. Uh, simultaneous sprites, way more than a, uh, any 2D uh, console I know of. Uh, 360,000 polygons per second. As the Japanese launch approaches, Edge arrives at the ultimate game playing platform. And they were right. They knew that this would take over the industry. So look at the old colors for the PlayStation logo. I think they turned turn the purple into red. And uh, they're talking about how the PlayStation 1 would become the, um, the new dominant console. And mostly because it's stuck to gaming. I mean, you could also play CDs on it. Um, but it couldn't play movies like the CDI tried. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, it was a dedicated gaming console. Which was, uh, yeah, kind of special at the time because the 3DO also tried to be a bit of everything. Same for the CD32. Nevertheless, there's a feature on the CDI which was selling well again thanks to uh, a lot of commercials airing. So it had a second life in 1994. Uh, here we have the Tokyo Toy Show. I've never heard of that before. And we see, uh, yeah, the Saturn. I don't know what this is. Oh yeah, Clockwork Knight, a lousy platformer for the Saturn. I wish this would stay open a little bit by itself. So uh, here we have Panzer Dragoon, the Shinobi game for Saturn, which wasn't good, and not Virtual, uh, need, not Virtual Striker, but Victory Goal apparently, which was rather good. And Sony was there too. Showing off their games, we have the uh, Neo Geo CD, which could help you play affordable Neo Geo games, but the loading times were horrible. And we have the 32-bit uh, PC engine, which, uh, what was it called? Just the FX, right? And not a success. Only released in Japan is as far as I know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't as good at 3D as the PlayStation, but it did try to sell this game called FX Fighter. And another game, let's see what's this called. Uh, I can't see the, see the name. Anyhow, whoa, geez, this magazine's not working with me today. Let me try the other hand. Okay. Let's continue with the Convict Spring Show Report. Um, this is more about computers. And there's a new kind of 3D card, apparently. And some of the latest news. Um, Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat 2 looking very well. The first images of the 32X. Subscribe to Edge. I would still love to have one of these binders. No luck so far. Okay, and we're already at the preview section of the magazine. And we see Demon's Crest. Very good platformer adventure game by Capcom, but didn't sell well at all. But if you're into action adventures, worth taking a look at. Here we have the 11th hour, the sequel to the seventh guest, with, which had even better good looking graphics. I believe it was a bit longer, but uh, what can I say? These silly puzzle adventures. Jesus. 
Okay. <laughs> These silly puzzle adventures, they are not worth your time, even back then. Fun to look at, but hardly any gameplay. And they were just silly puzzles. Uh, Virtual Fighter is gearing up for the Saturn. Now, the Saturn wasn't very good at 3D, and they had to work hard on it. And the original release of the game wasn't very good. That's why they made a uh, Virtual Fighter remix later on for the Saturn, which had better graphics. Uh, but they had to finish the game in time for the console. So uh, you see alpha versions of this game with less polygons, more polygons, more polygons. Same here with uh, these characters. And some hinting images to uh, Virtual Fighter 2, which would have even more polygons. Uh, let's see, what's this game again? Oh yeah, so this game was first called King Arthur, uh, The Quest of the Fair Unknown, but they changed the name. And I looked it up, uh, but I've already forgotten the name. We would love to tell you, would love to tell you the name it eventually became, but in all fairness, it wasn't a good game. It was, a, I believe, a click and carry adventure with a medieval setting. Uh, so here we see some rendered images of skeletons. We'll see them again later on. Wing Commander Part Three, which had Kirk Hamill. And uh, lots of great FMV sequences. It looked fantastic. Uh, but yeah, it was just the so many at Wind Command Commander game. And by then, people were getting a bit bored. So there was little interest. I think that was the last big Wind Commander game. Super Sea Fighter 2 being released for the Super Nintendo. Uh, very good port considering the technology. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the turbo version. Um, so you didn't have super moves. Edge says you have the super moves, but that didn't, that wasn't the case. You didn't have all the new rebalances. And, uh, I, I, I was, I was quite bummed out as a teenager because I really wanted to play the latest and best version of Street Fighter 2. And, um, you had to go to the arcade, but where I grew up in the Netherlands, they didn't have any arcades. So I took a look at the 3DO version, but that wasn't good enough. Uh, a couple years later, you had the PlayStation 1 version as part of a collection. Again, it uh, wasn't good enough. And it wasn't until the Dreamcast version in 2000 uh, that I felt like I finally had Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo at home, or anywhere to be honest, because I didn't have any arcades in Utrecht. I was able to play the game a couple times when I was visiting the States. And uh, But Super Nintendo version, uh, I prefer normal turbo, uh, super to turbo because it has better balance and better sounds. Okay, a PlayStation, a bunch of numbers saying how strong they are. And uh, yeah, let's talk about, well, how they develop the thing. I wish they stuck to the pure white at the start, which they eventually went back to with the PS1 around 2000. You see uh, images of uh, early games like uh, uh, Poly Poly Circus Grand Prix. I think that would become uh, Wacky Races or something. Um, made by the person who eventually made Gran Turismo. You see this game Labyrinth again. People keep talking about Now it's called... Uh, yeah, it used to be called Legend in the previous edges. Now it's Labyrinth. I still couldn't find this game on the internet. Um, this is interesting to see. Like I said, Skeletons, Crystal Dragon by From Software. That would become Kingsfield 1. And if you, in case you didn't know, the first four Kingsfield games were the uh, would eventually lead to the Dark Souls series. It has a lot of the same atmosphere. Very foreboding, very difficult. I wouldn't say Kingsfield games are good, but you can tell that From Software with their game Demon's Soul wanted to make uh, what they tried to first try in the Kingsfield games. So Namco showing off some of their hardware, uh, which would be translated to software like Ridge Racer. I don't know if um, Cyber Sled or Starblade ever made it to the PlayStation 1. Uh, Capcom, again, uh, we see here Super Turbo. 
And Ed says it'll be it'll be for the PlayStation, but it never was released. At least it was until uh, Street Fighter Collection around 1998, I think. So it took a while. Uh, Ghouls and Goblins and Breath of Fire. Breath of Fire 3 was released for the PlayStation. It looked fantastic, but I never finished it. Konami, uh, some silly games. Uh, they would eventually rock the PlayStation very hard with international... Uh, Superstar Soccer, or AKA Winning Eleven, uh, Winning Eleven, AKA Pro Evolution Soccer, and of course the Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid series. So we have the CDI, the second version, as far as I'm aware of. And we'll also see an image of the even later third version here, but still just the CDI. Um, yeah. Good at playing movies, but there weren't that many good movies for it. And hosts to a lot of horrible games. Probably the best game for the system is Burn Cycle, which still had to be released. But even that is rather silly. I wish Jeff Minter made a game for the system. That would have been cool. Yeah, here we have images of Burn Cycle. I believe that's the top one. Then we have here um, Chaos Control, seen earlier, and Edge. And Lost Eden, same thing. Pretty games, subpar gameplay. Uh, to the reviews. Oh, we're going pretty fast this time. I still see commercials for Manga and Edge. Okay, so Theme Park being released finally for the PC, but also find its way to... Uh, the Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Amiga, pretty much everything. Not the Game Boy, though, unfortunately. And it's a uh, really cute make-your-own-theme-park game, which would inspire the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. And Edge gives an A, rightfully so. It was fun, and it was interesting. Super Sidekicks 2 for the Neo Geo. I've only played the original Super Sidekicks. It was a nice and fast... Uh, arcade uh, soccer game and I guess part two is even better they give it an eight but it costs you about 300 bucks to, play, to buy Wild Tracks which is I don't know how they got that name uh, they even mentioned the name Stunt Race FX in the review which is the name most of us know and they talk about all the different things you can do. This, uh, unlike virtual racing, which only had three courses in one car, this game had, I believe, I don't know how many courses it had, plenty of them. And it had five cars you can ride. I mean, you have three standard cars, a truck, a uh, coupe, and a, uh, I think, a, like a Ferrari of sorts. And, you know, this is the Ferrari. It's kind of like Formula, Formula One. But you also had the motorcycle and the big rig. If I recall correctly. So lots of games, a lot of different modes to play. And it was all about fun. Uh, even the multiplayer was uh, kind of just you know, fun. Even though the frame rate was horrible, it was just you had a good time just plowing through those levels and enjoying the, the sounds. It, I mean, it doesn't look like a Nintendo game, but it has the feel once you start playing it. And Edge even gives it a 9. I think it's a bit too high. Uh, it's definitely not as good as Super Mario Kart or F-Zero, but, uh, yeah, way to go, uh, FX Chip, the second one. A better game than Virtual Racing, if you ask me, and cheaper. So, Dr. Hauser, we discussed that on Yesterday a bit, a survival horror game. A bit short, uh, but very atmospheric. For the 3DO, made by Japanese. So the first big Japanese game for 3DO, and it got a 7 because it's it's a good game, especially for its time. And it would inspire Resident Evil, among other games, like Alone in the Dark. Now we have Out of This World, sometimes called Another World, a, a huge game from 1991 on the PC and Amiga, and now finding its way to the 3DO. Um, Edge says it has very good gameplay. I do not agree. The controls are extremely stiff and your options are very limited. But the game is extremely atmospheric. It's a strange world and it's just a it's just lovely to walk through it and find